Hi. In this video, we in the past video we were discussing the uh, the salary and wages of food and beverage department divided into various departments, uh, various sections, management and non-management. Uh, the important thing when when we are splitting it uh, is to ensure that we don't give out the confidentiality. So if you have only one director of food and beverage in the whole department and the others are non-managerial staff or you have only one food and beverage manager, the rest are supervisors and, um, and the other junior staff. Splitting the cost into management and non-management would cause uh, a display of his salary and other confidential information into the P&L itself. So anybody else who is reading the profit and loss statement would know that how much is the cost of the director of food and beverage or the manager, right? So in those cases, you may need to combine the cost with the non-management because you don't want to give out the information which is sensitive. Uh, then you have some other case example uh, somebody has worked in one outlet not in the other outlet so you may have uh, somebody who is working usually in a cafe uh, and then now you have uh, you have assigned him to work for let's say 10 days in a banquet due to a heavy function so you should be splitting the cost uh, or the salary of that person into the different outlets or different venues so that the real profitability of the department is can be ascertained easily. You are not charging everything to the home department. So the home department would only be pro uh, processing the cost but not really, uh, not everything is going to be charged to them. So the other uh, aspects of salary and wages that is it includes the basic pay, it includes the 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 supplementary the the basic pay, the uh, the contract pay, the overtime, the and also the the shift shift differential. Sometimes you have split uh, shift payments, so that also is going into salary and wages. So salary and wages may have basic pay plus the these uh, split out uh, overtime pay, split shift pay or other uh, payments which is considered into the uh, salary and wages uh, in the GL but in, in the P&L it will combine as a one salary and wages split by the departments, uh, sorry split by the management titles. Then the next line item in the labor cost is the service charge distribution. As we discussed in the previous uh, while we were discussing the revenue is that when uh, the service charge in the check is um, non-discretionary and is mandatory for the guest to pay which is usually distributed to the staff on maybe equally basis or based on points or however it the policy of the company is whatever amount actual amount is distributed to the staff will be shown here as a service charge distribution because that service charge uh, collection is shown into the revenue and service charge distribution will go to the, uh, the cost it may impact the profitability of the, the department uh, by a bit however that's the right treatment to do then the next line item you have is contracted leased and outsourced labor uh, some usually very uh, more often uh, the banquets or the, the the cafe when they are very busy they hire casual staff or contract uh, staff which are they which they hire for one one day two day or three days the cost of those contracted leased or outsourced labor is going to be charged to the this cost but you have to remember that it's not processed through the regular payroll if the regular if they are provided through with the regular payroll then it will be um, charged to the labor cost but is not is uh, normally these costs are not processed through the labor to the normal payroll of the hotel is they are paid out separately either in cash or by the, the check so usually you hire other peoples to 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 cover up the shortage of the shortage of the staff um, then that cost is going to be charged to contracted lease and outsourced labor the next line item in the labor cost is bonus and incentive so it's the bonus and incentive related to those fnb staff uh, which is straightforward then you have payroll related expenses which includes uh, payroll tax when the employee when there is a usually a tax uh, related to the 
the social security uh, contribution or the retirement unemployment contribution disability medical insurance which is paid to the government then they will be included in the payroll tax because they usually are related to the employment and uh, the payroll related as a percentage to payroll uh not the the pay not the main uh non voluntary insurance that the company has done so the voluntary insurance would be considered as employee benefits rather than um, payroll tax but the uh, contributions charged by the government is going to be the payroll tax sometimes the the company is paying the the taxes the payroll taxes gross up taxes of the employees so that also can go here or in the employee benefits then you have supplemental pay means the 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 pay related to the uh, vacation sick leave holiday so usually employees go on leave so the their the basic pay related to those days will be deducted out from the salary and wages and will be charged here usually the 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 employees are the company is making a provision every month let's say the the employee has got 12 days of leave in a year even though he may may not be taking those leaves the company may be uh, accrue accruing one leave every month so that it can accumulate in a provision and whenever the employee is taking the the leave then the amount of that leave will be charged to that provision instead of the basic pay so that's usually is done uh, in most of the hotel accounting the other way to do this is to charge out the provision uh, every month but um, in and and adjust the provision when you are taking the leave but the right way right method would be to to make a provision every month and whenever the employee is taking the leave then you instead of charging it the the whole salary to the basic pay to the salary and wages you will be splitting the the charge between the actual number of working days and also the number of days leave has been taken so the as number of days leave can will be charged to the provision that every month we are accumulating so that we don't really charge uh, the 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 pnl with the 10 day leave in one month or uh, on two months so you have to make sure that every month you are making a provision for the the vacation pays or the other things you cannot make provision for sick leave or holiday pay or other pay uh when you do, because they, those are not um those are not uh, the rights it, it depends on when they actually happen so you cannot make a provision for those kind of only the provision which you need to need to make is the vacation leaves then you have the employee benefits so as we discussed in the rooms department as well we're going to be looking at the employee benefits in the next video again